I just received the latest Olympus lens. The focal length is from 8 millimeters through to 25, so it is a super wide angle lens. What is interesting about the range is that at 25, which of course would be 50 in film, then that is very similar to the focal length of a standard lens, which we used to have on film cameras, called a standard lens because the perspective and angle of view was very similar to the human eye. So we go from that natural perspective right through to a super wide angle, which is absolutely fantastic inside buildings. The other feature of this lens that is important is that it is a constant aperture lens. It's f4 throughout its entire range. And I'm going to take it out and give it a try. Right, I'm going to disappoint some of you straight away. This is not a technical review. If you're looking for that, then look on YouTube elsewhere. There are plenty of other photographers, excellent photographers out there, who have far better knowledge than I on the technical capabilities of this lens. So what I'm going to show you is having got it, the sort of subjects that you can take. And I will provide some technical information on the way. For my first shoot, if you can call it that, I took it down to my local coffee shop and took my very first picture, the interior of where I have my daily coffee mornings with friends. I showed the picture to the owner. He liked it so much that he asked for a copy. Although this lens, which I remind you, has a focal length range from 8 to 25, that would be 16 to 50 in film, although it is marketed as a lens for landscape photography, amongst other subjects, of course, I think, personally, it excels in interiors, like churches or stately homes. So my first trip was across the North Downs here to Sheldon Church. And inside the church, you got this fantastic mural. It dates back to about 1200, but it was then covered at some stage with whitewash, which wasn't discovered until 1870. It's quite um, gory in its concept. Um, and the church itself is very dark. In fact, I had to bump the ISO up to 800, something normally I don't like doing. Wherever possible, I tried to keep the ISO at 200. But inside the church, it was so dark, it had to go up 400. Oh dear, 800. Right, now I can handhold the camera, even with the image stabilizer in the camera because the lens does not have an image stabilizer so I have to rely on the stabilizer in the camera only. And I think I've been okay. See what you think. I did don my boots for a dedicated walk. For those of you who know the area, I commenced my walk at Oxted walked the Greensand Ridge to Crockham Hill. What I very quickly found out, particularly when using the lens at 8mm, its widest angle, that you need either strong foreground interest to make the picture work, or a busy scene like inside 
woodland, etc. That sort of thing. I did go inside the church at Crockham Hill, but what I didn't know about, and I had to go and have a look, is that in the churchyard is the grave of Octavia Hill. Who is Octavia Hill, you might ask? Well, she was one of the founder members of the National Trust, and that, of course, is her resting place. So it might seem appropriate now for my next visit that I go to a National Trust property, not too far away, near East Grinstead, the National Trust property of Standon. Ah, hello. Now, today you've uh, caught me at Standon. It's a National Trust property not far from East Grinstead in West Sussex. Built late 19th century, very much associated with the arts and crafts movement in its design. Now, I'm here with the Olympus Zwicker 825 Pro lens. It has an f4 constant aperture, but as I've got to hand hold the camera inside the house and no flash either, then I think I've got to bump up the ISO to 400. Fortunately, it is a cloudy day, not so good for outdoor photography, but ideal inside because the dynamic range will be reduced. So, let's see how I got on. Upon leaving Standard, I took the bus back to East Grinstead. I had an hour to spare, so I went inside the parish church. Wasn't quite as dark inside there as children, but I still had to put the ISO up to 400 so that I could hand hold the camera comfortably. What was also interesting is that when you are working at full wide angle, then you've got incredible depth of field. And also remember, with micro four thirds, because the sensor is smaller, then you have more depth of field than larger formats. And therefore it's quite surprising that even at full aperture, F4, Everything was sharp from front to back, even when you had something quite close to you in the uh, foreground. But uh, you still had to observe a traditional photo technique called the hyperfocal distance, where you detach autofocus and manually about a third of the way into the picture so that everything is sharp from front to back whatever the technology. For my final shoot, I took the train to London. My first visit was to Southwark Cathedral. Unfortunately, there weren't too many people about. Also, the interior of the cathedral was lighter than the previous two churches, therefore I was able to keep the ISO on 200 and rely on the image stabilisation inside the camera, which incidentally was the EM1 Mark II. The other problem 
was the amount of artificial light mixing with daylight. So what I did was to put the ISO onto auto. I was saving to RAW, therefore I could adjust the colour balance in the comfort of my own home. After Southwark Cathedral, you could say I went to another cathedral, but of quite a different sort, namely Paddington Station, Brunel's masterpiece for his entry into London. You've got this fantastic roof which has recently been restored. It was installed in the 1850s and the breadth of this roof is 102 feet. Absolutely ideal for the 8mm end of this fantastic lens. Afterwards, I slipped out of the railway station just across the road to the Paddington Basin, an offshoot of the Grand Union Canal, which of course the railways in a sense rather killed, but fortunately today used for leisure purposes. I walked from Paddington Basin to Little Venice, which is not far away, no more than a quarter of a mile. As you can see, it was a dull day. Now, this sort of lighting is perfect for the interior of Paddington Station and Southwark Cathedral, but not so good for Greek landscapes, particularly at the extreme wide-angle part of this lens. The sky becomes the most boring part of the picture, so you want to get rid of it. And there were opportunities by the canal at Little Venice to obscure the sky as much as possible. And I think it's worked rather well, and it made me see perhaps Little Venice in a different way than had it been a lovely sunny day. So there's always a plus out of what might have been a negative. After Little Venice, I paused for a spot of dinner. Well, early dinner, really, because I wanted to catch nightfall, which would start about uh, four o'clock at this time of year, at Tower Bridge. Now, what is interesting here is that when you try to meter the scene, then the metering system does not read black as black. It reads it as a grey. And it doesn't matter what metering mode you are on, whether it's ESP, centre weighted or spot, it will not expose to it correctly. So what I did is to underexpose using exposure bias by two whole stops. Now this had an unexpected benefit. I was able, with the help of, of course, the camera's superior image stabilisation, I was able to keep the ISO on 200. But now, with the minus 2 exposure value, I had a shutter speed of a fifteenth of a second. Now, had I not underexposed by two whole stops, then that shutter speed would have been a quarter of a second. I did at one point, whilst crossing Tower Bridge, decide to try a two second exposure. I don't know whether it's worked. And then I proceeded via St Catherine's Dock, then took the tube up to Piccadilly Circus to photograph the Christmas lights in Regent Street before going home, which was a spectacular end to the day. I had to be a little careful. There were quite a lot of people about, but there were places where I could stand where I was not in other people's way. And I'll end this short program with my Christmas festivities to you, and I hope it's given you some ideas what you can do with this lens should you choose to acquire one. <music>